popping into the garage to see what is going on with the 67 Mustang. Carl, come on over here and give us an update. All right, hey everybody. Uh, so, we're getting ready to work on this car and we're just gonna show you the progress of what's going on. We have stripped it down and I'm getting ready to start reinforcing the firewall because we're gonna cut the entire back half of the car off uh, to start the conversion. But to do that, I wanna make sure that we make the firewall steady, safe, so the body's not twisting or anything like that. It's up on jack stands and it's uh, leveled on those jack stands. And it's just now it's in the phase of where we're gonna start deconstructing it. Uh, just to show you a few things that we've done, uh, there was wiring in the car. I took all the wiring out. We're gonna move it over to the center, wrap it up in a, a fiberglass blanket so we do, the sparks and the welding and the cutting doesn't affect it. It's a brand new wiring harness, so we're gonna protect that. Um, that's been moved over. The framing here, we're just cutting it and making sure that everything fits, and I'm happy with that first before I weld everything in. And the reason we're doing this is the firewall will have no support once we cut the back half of the car off. This part here will bend and twist, and we don't want that. We want everything to be back square when we put it back together. So that's why we're doing the framing. And as a special treat, when I took the headliner down, uh, there was a mouse. A little critter was making a nest up under there. So that seems to be a common trend in most of the cars I'm working on. One thing I discovered, so there's two ways to do the fastback conversion. Um, there's an easier way where you don't have to take all this out and you splice into the roof here, and then you only use the part that comes down here. Uh, we were trying to see if we could do that with this car, but I found out we cannot, so we're going to have to do the entire um, piece that comes from Dynacorn. And one of the reasons why, it looks like the car was actually hit, it looks like there was an accident here at one point, and I'll just show you kind of why I believe that. Um, if you come up here and look, this piece all right here should be all one piece. And it should be nice and straight without any of these marks, dents and, and stuff in it. You can see somebody has taken this and cut this across here and replaced this part here. This rocker panel has been replaced and you can see the marks where they replaced it here. So this section here, the door has to, to line up perfectly with this line. And I believe and I feel that this rocker panel, when it was put on, was put on too far forward. And what that was doing is when you try to fix this line here, was affecting our gap back here. We had a huge, huge gap on the back of the door. So this was put in. I don't believe and I don't feel it was put in um, exactly right. And you can also see if we come in here. So I'm shining some light in here so you can see what I'm talking about. This section should be perfectly smooth. You can see how it's all been beat with the hammer and it's bent and twisted. This all should be also perfectly smooth. You can see how panels were patched in here. Just haphazardly put together as patch panels. Up in here, you can see some of these welds and the way the metal's not straight. That's why I think this whole section was patched and repaired. Um, it that didn't affect the floor, it didn't affect the frame. I looked at the frame, the frame is not bent. So with our new piece from Dynacorn, it's gonna replace all of this metal. And this will just hammer and dolly and straighten that out. What I wanna do is I wanna show you the other side, the way it's supposed to look, without any damage. So here's the passenger side of the car. This is the way it's supposed to look. This is apart from the door. This is the way it's supposed to look. It's nice and straight. This piece up here is perfectly straight. This up here has no bends or dents or anything in it. This is the factory inner cowl, I guess if you want to call it, and the floor structure. So that's why it's leading me to believe that the other side was hit. That's why we're going to go with the more extensive repair just to make this car right and, and make it perfect as close as we can make it. Um, I don't want to patch and work over someone else's work that I'm not happy with. So all in all, we're going to take the entire frame out and uh, getting ready to get started on it and get ready to start cutting it up. So basically when we cut the roof off the car, there's no structure here to hold this uh, firewall. It actually will move and be floppy. So what we have to do is I've got some square tubing that we're going to weld in. And the front section is going to weld right to the top of the um, dash. And I'm welding it to a section of the dash that's covered by the dash pad. The back section of it, we're going to tie in and weld it right to where the frame of the car, the rear frame, 
that the leaf spring's attached to, we're going to weld it right into that area so it's nice and solid. It cannot move back and forth. We're also going to have one more support that's going to come up and across here. And what we're going to do, it's going to be welded. And this will come in here, so it's going to be welded here and here. We're not going to weld it here. This piece is going to be done on both sides. And this is going to be a reference point for when the new windshield frame goes on the car. We can put it here. It'll rest on the inside of the where the windshield goes. And that'll be a good reference point to make sure that the sides of the car are square. I'm also going to have a piece that'll go across from side to side right in here to help support this. Um, we're just doing every effort we can to keep the car from twisting and to keep the firewall from moving and coming backwards on us. So that's kind of the templates, that's kind of the pieces right now. We're still going to work on some of these angles so it fits a little bit better and weld these in. Once these are welded in, then the fun part of cutting the car apart will start taking place. All right, so one other thing I did want to show, and I thought this was unique, and if anybody's out there that's doing an Eleanor conversion, an Eleanor car, or the ground effects with the exhaust coming out the side, I just wanted to show how that's done. Um, in the rocker panel itself, you cut out a section of that rocker panel, and then in the torque box of the car, this is the torque box. You cut out the side of the torque box and you go straight through to the other side. So then the side exhaust would come out here and with your exhaust tip. And then ground effect, side scoop, whatever you want to call it, would be molded onto the car. And then you have your opening for your exhaust and it would be like maybe a chrome exhaust tip here on the side. And that way you would have side exhaust with the ground effects on the car. These cars are just way too low to be able to push the, the exhaust underneath it. That's how you would have your exhaust come out of the side on the Eleanor type conversions. So I just wanted to pass that on. I thought that was kind of unique and kind of interesting. All right guys, that is our shop update. Stay tuned for how-to videos, more concentrated videos on how some of the stuff that's taking place on the car. Look for those in the future. And we will also have more on the 55 Chevy as we get those how-tos ready. But right now we're going to focus on this. So hit that subscribe button if you're into it. And hit the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. Thanks!